It is harvest time in Lejone, a small village tucked away in mountains more than 2,000 meters above sea level. From a river at the foot of Lesotho's peaks, fishermen hold nets bulging with trout onto a floating platform. The settlement is home to one of Lesotho's two professional fish farms, pioneering ventures in the landlocked kingdom. It's a special area that has everything else you need for growing trout. Uh, oxygen, temperature, the biology itself, all of it lines itself to trout. And that's the reason why trout does well. The fish are killed and put on ice, first step on their journey to dinner tables in neighboring South Africa. Starting out 17 years ago, Pakisi had no knowledge of fish farming and was simply driven by a desire to make money. I didn't think we would be where we are today because we were the first people to fish trout in Lesotho commercially, the first people to do trout in this size of body of water, uh, which we didn't understand. So you, you had to understand the behavior of the reservoir itself. Trout farming in Lesotho has grown on the back of another of the mountainous country's most famous exports, water. By damming its waterways, the country has widened river beds, making them ideal for fish farming. But climate change presents another challenge to farmers. So the climate changes every year. So every year you, you deal with different externalities. So you learn as you go, you adapt as you go. You can't say you master this thing because the climate is changing every year. Pakiri supplies a few local restaurants where the trout is usually pan fried in butter and served with a side dish of curry and potato chips or rice. But the bulk of his production lands on the shelves of high end supermarkets in South Africa, where a vacuum packed one kilo bag can cost up to $50.